Hello everybody, this is Gregory at the Cinema Rag. I hope you're doing well today. Today we're going to continue this series, Movies I Love, and talk about Rounders from the late 90s. Now before I begin, if you appreciate my content, please subscribe and hit the notification bell if you haven't done so already, and post a comment if you've seen this movie. Rounders came out at a time when I was about 25 years old. I lived in Alaska at the time. I went to graduate school at the University of Alaska in Fairbanks, uh, which is the flagship university. And yes, we actually have buildings. They were igloos. Uh, and I was up there in the late 90s when Rounders came out. And Rounders is, is I, I think it's just one of those guys movies. And if you're younger, Gen Z, or uh, maybe you haven't seen this movie, but I think kind of Gen X people like me, this is a, a, a movie that's well known. Some would say iconic. So what's the backstory? The backstory of Rounders is you're catching two young actors before they've really hit it big, but are already kind of big. So you look at Matt Damon as Team America War Police. Another Movies I Love episode here. I think that was Movies I Love number one. You have Matt Damon coming off of Goodwill Hunting. He's he's hot off of Goodwill Hunting. He still has the frosty tips from Goodwill Hunting. He's coming off. He plays Mike McDee. He is like the 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 poker player who who has aspirations to be great, but he lost and now he is driving a truck and he's in law school because he's a bright kid. And then you have Ed Norton coming in, and Ed Norton plays Worm, who was a high school friend or a prep school friend of Mike Mede, Matt Damon's character, who got in some trouble with the law and covered for Matt Damon's character. And so he gets out of the pen, and Worm is, like the name would suggest, like the guy has problems with prudence and is irrational, irascible, and always pushes the limits and so he gets out of the joint and wants to go back to rounding so rounders means hustling playing poker to make money off of people and damon's character is like i'm reformed i'm reformed i got this really boring girlfriend i'm reformed i'm trying to get through law school and then through a series of events because of, of norton's character it, it's like a pacino from godfather 3 i want to get out but they keep bullying me back in and so Matt Damon's got to start doing poker again uh, to make money. And what eventually happens is Norton is such a sleazeball that where Damon is not involved, he actually gets more money from these, these places and puts it on Damon's name and the interest is running. And through a series of events, Damon near the end realizes that he owes the, the Russian mob like $15,000 and he's got 24 hours to pay it or he's gonna get beat up. By the way, we'll continue the story in a second. So Norton, we do have an episode here on Norton, a Norton retrospective. I did it after Glass Onion came out, Knives Out number two. And we, of course, we have a couple, many episodes on Matt Damon. We have Damon versus Affleck, who would you rather be? Norton's coming off of Primal Fear, which was his great breakout role, the Richard Gere movie where, spoiler alert, he actually committed the crime, even though he pretended he didn't. And then he's coming off of People versus Larry Flint. He just had done American History X, which is probably his iconic role. He still has the goatee when you see this movie where he, where he plays Worm in Rounders. He still has the goatee from American History X, but he's definitely not all muscled up, so he let that kind of slide. And he's, he's about to do Fight Club. Damon is about to do Ripley. I mean, this is like peak, almost you could say peak of their best work before especially with Damon, maybe gets too big with the Bourne movies, and then he's on another level. But I love young Damon. I think young Damon's a great actor. And also, I think some of it is just nostalgia uh, for me when I, when I watch Good Will Hunting, which is probably still my favorite movie of all time. I mean, no offense to Godfather or whatnot, but I just love Good Will Hunting. And so I really love Damon. And so this movie, wh why do I like this movie? Because uh, the dialogue, Koppelman and Levine wrote this screenplay you might not know their name, but they're probably most famous now for creating the show Billions, which we talked about in the Paul Giamatti episode. And they, the, the, the script is great. And look, I don't know anything about poker, nothing about poker. But when I saw this movie, I was sucked in because I like the lingo because the way they do the exposition, Damon does the, the kind of the voiceover. But it's done in a way where like, they don't tell you everything about poker, but they tell you just enough to kind of know what's going on. But there's a lot of, of, of words and slogans that are being used that I have no idea what they are, and you just have to figure out what they are. And so you got that going for it. It's, just, it's another world. Then you got, you got great side characters. You got Martin Landau playing, playing the professor. 
you got Famke Jensen, who I particularly have never found attractive, but a lot of you know the, the X Men guys like her as uh, what's her name, Lady Lady Jung Gray later on uh, in the X Men movies, and then of course you got Malkovich, and it's funny because I've heard oral histories from this about this movie. It's like they didn't know <laughs> he was going to do this accent. And so when they when, when they when he showed up to set, you know, this is John Malkovich already in '98. He's a legend. You think of all his great movies like Dangerous Liaisons and In the Line of Fire. He shows up with this with the Teddy KGB accent, and they're like, "Okay, we're just gonna go with this." And he's just smoking. He's just on fire. He's just a great character, and just it's just a great New York movie as well. And it's just the chemistry, really, like the chemistry between Damon and Norton is just great. They got a great, great dialogue and just the shenanigans that they get involved with. Uh, it's just interesting and it's fun. And you, you know the whole time Norton's gonna screw everything up. He screws everything up. And then they have just a great full circle because at the beginning, Damon, the opening scene of course, is that he goes to Teddy KGB because he thinks he can beat Teddy KGB and then he loses and then at the end, uh, he beats him. And then he realizes that his true calling is, is to be a rounder and not to be in law school. He drops out of law school. Speaking of law school, you got Gretchen Maul. So I remember at the time, Gretchen Maul was like the it girl. And look, at the time, she's beautiful. She's a kind of a, the sexy Saturday girl that I would like. Just statuesque, pale, blue eyes, really beautiful girl. Didn't have much of a career because I don't think she's that good of an actress. And man, does she ruin this movie. Like any, any scene that she and Damon are in, it's just like, she doesn't have it. She doesn't have it. She's beautiful, uh, but she doesn't have it. John Turturro's in this. Love Turturro. He is great as Kanish. He's uh, like the, the seasoned rounder who uh, Worm, Norton's character, always makes fun of because he plays it safe and he just plays enough here and there as a, as a genius poker player to like pay the bills and all that. And so Norton's character looks down on him because he's got no edge, he's really boring. But Kanish is a guy who has, again, something that Norton's character doesn't have, prudence. And so you just see how Norton screws everything up for Matt Damon. And there is a belief like that Norton is not really Damon's friend. In fact, the whole movie, Norton wants to, to screw over Damon. And if you go into that movie, you go into rewatching it, and this movie I think is on Paramount right now. If you go into the movie watching with that angle, you could totally see it. Like, remember, he goes to jail almost because of Damon, and so maybe he wants to get revenge. So what, what happens in, in this movie? Because of, of Worm, Damon drops out of law school, loses his girlfriend, even though she's boring, she'd be a good girlfriend to have. Um, he gets beat up and then gets Damon's character into debt to the point where he could lose his life or at least be mangled by Teddy KGB. And then Norton at the end just bails on him and, and is a flight risk. And luckily, of course, Damon's character wins. You know, he doesn't have to worry about it. Either way, there's always been talk of a sequel to this movie. And I think a great sequel, if they ever did it, because now it's almost going to be it's more than 25 years now, um, is have Worm be running like the poker mob or whatever equivalent it would be. I don't know. I don't think he could get into the Russian mob. But have him be the bad guy. And again, it kind of goes with this theory that I have. Have him be the bad guy. He's mad at Damon's character. Damon, you could either have as reformed or he's been a rounder or maybe he's won the World Series of, of poker or whatever. And then have some sort of setup and then their kids can be involved and one of the kids is in the poker and the other one is an inveterate gambling addict and the other one's a good kid. I don't know, whatever. But at the end, have it where Damon has got a face off against Norton and there's like high stakes involved, life or death stakes. I think that'd be a great sequel. I know that both of them have been approached about a rounder sequel and they seem both to be open to it. And I think for, certainly for Norton's career, I think it'd be good for him. But we know Norton is, is just known to be hard to work with, Damon not so much, but it would be great to see a sequel. Guys, post in the comments, what's your take with rounders? Do you love this movie as much as I do? And if so, why? Until next time, take care, God bless and pray.